And now, BBC One presents an address from London Mayor Boris Johnson. Hello, governors and governesses of the noble American Football Federation. Tis I, Boris Johnson, Mayor of London. As King Roger Goodell I is considering relocating his squad to the rogue city-state of Los Angeles, I wish to enter a plea to prove that London is the fitting suitor. In London, we have the finest architecture that stands for generations. In Los Angeles, the structures honor cuisine, a health concern locale indeed. In London, you can stroll in the footsteps of Dickens, Churchill, and Newton. And in Los Angeles, you get to stroll away quickly as a man brandishing his screwdriver attempts to lift your pocket watch. Yes, he already has. In London, we boast the finest physicians educated at prestigious universities. In Los Angeles, you get a complimentary medical license with the purchase of a ticket to Burning Man. King Roger, please see to it that the locale of choice is the proud city of London. I shall earnestly await your correspondence whilst watching the box score, which commences forth. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power Tower for Box Score! Hello and welcome to the Box Score. I'm Brock in Los Angeles. They are the Danettes in Milford, Connecticut. Uh, guys, uh, playoff time is almost here because we are already shaming the coaches for playing their players. Even, uh, the, even though the Carolina Panthers are trying for an undefeated season and they've locked up the NFC C, uh, South, uh, the question still is out there. Should Ron Rivera start or sit his players? So, McLovin, what should Coach do? I would start Derek Anderson because he can single-handedly beat the Bucs. He actually came out last week. He threw a bullet across the field. Derek Anderson is not bad. He could probably start on a bunch of teams. But that defense against the Bucs at home in Carolina, because I'm nervous about Cam, although Todd and I discussed the rust factor. So I'm a little torn. But I start Derek Anderson and win the game anyway. Fritzy, how do you uh, fight rust? How do you fight rust? You get this Rust-Oleum product. No, the, the way you fight rust is you don't put yourself in a, in a situation to get rusty and you play all your top players all the way through and if you have a chance to go undefeated, you go undefeated and you don't put yourself in a situation where you rest for a week or two. Then you have a bye week, which is another rest week and then all of a sudden this great team that was clicking now hasn't played in two, three weeks and uh, disaster can happen like a divisional playoff first round knockout after a... Uh, kind of like you after vacation, like the guest list takes a little while to get clear. You always it's go fair. easy on Mondays. Yeah. yeah. You, you got to kind of, you know, you gear it up, and then hopefully by Wednesday or Thursday you have something uh, you could be remotely proud of. You just lubricate. That's what you do. All right, well, the NFL conversation, a <laughs> switch to relocation, and DP LA insider Todd Marina Del Rey Fritz uh, said that there's not enough interest out here for a football team, and then Landon Donovan, superstar, called in from the Shire and took him to task. When Fritz says nobody cares about football here, it kind of irks me, you know? Hmm. Here's the issue. I grew up a Raider fan because it was all I knew for a few years in my childhood, and then they left. And what happens when you live in L.A. is that we haven't had a team to support forever. If you're a Charger fan, that's different. But when you don't have a team, you sort of become a little bit jaded, and you start <clears throat> playing fantasy football, or in my case, you root for the Raiders. But you forget what it's like to have a team that you support and love. So just the thought of the team coming has me excited and a lot of people excited. We just want a team that we can support. I don't know if it's his delivery, but uh, and we kind of took a shot at him after uh, after he hung up. But I'm not hearing the passion in his voice. He's a soccer guy. I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not going to go to the lengths of saying what does uh, Landon Donovan know about football. He knows his kind of football. But um, I, I'm glad he called in and weighed in. I don't know if he's necessarily the voice of. Uh, of Southern California as far as what they want and don't want in terms of the pigskin. And uh, mm. and again, even though I haven't lived in L.A. a number of years, it's going to take a lot to convince me that the average fan really cares that much either way. If a team comes, they'll check it out briefly, and then if the team's no good and once the celebs stop showing up, it won't be that cool to show up to the fad that is a new NFL team, and they'll go find something but else to do. Is that true, Brian? Does uh, Landon ever send you a text on Sunday and say, like, hey, what is this rule in football? What is, uh, what's a lateral? Like, does he not know football? I think he knows the sport. 
sports pretty well. I don't know, though. I, mean, I don't know if he's an expert on football. I think he is. I think he knows pretty well. Yeah. I don't actually Remember, think he is that's, American. He's that's not what he was commenting on, though. I don't think he was commenting on the actual game of football. He's talking about the area that he lives in and if they want a football team. He said he's a Raiders fan, though, so he right, really he doesn't what, know what football. Well, he played football. He played soccer up there at San Jose a long time yeah. ago. But yeah, I think if you were, had a team gone for a while, you'd just like, I got to find something else. It's not like you sit there and go, oh, I'm just going to sit here and wait for a team. Yeah. Uh, I, I think they would love a team in L.A. I mean, there's a lot of people there. If 1% of the people in Los Angeles attend the games, buy season tickets, it's a sellout. Well, yeah, attendance reads like this. The, the Clippers and the Kings are both enjoying standing room only numbers. Uh, the Lakers are at 99.7%. And we have uh, Dodgers leading all of baseball in average attendance. So, Polly, tell me, why do we get such a bad reputation as a sports town? I don't think it's the attendance, it's the style of attendance. Uh, for certain mm. sports teams out there, it's very casual to get there. Now, I've, I've visited there and the traffic is freaking nuts. I mean, if you want to go to a Dodgers game that starts at 7.05, mm -hmm. you would have to leave your house at 4.30. And, and I don't good, think good I'm, luck when it's time to leave. And I don't even think I'm kidding. And then after the game, I mean, it, it's really hard to get places in LA. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's expensive every, to do things. Yeah. I mean, all games are expensive to go to. I think, I think traffic is really a big part of it because every time I'm out there, all the people we work with, all they talk about is traffic. They're like, uh, when I say, hey, so where do you live? I, they say, oh, I live in Redondo. <laughs> 17 minutes to get to Burbank on a good day. You know what? <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't even ask you how your traffic was. It's like the, uh... We have this guy who lives in, there's a guy who works for us uh, named Mike, and he lives in, I think, uh, San Bernardino or somewhere, maybe an hour no, away. No, yeah. Uh... And they're, they're always like, I'm like, hey, is Mike coming out there? No, he lives in here. He lives like three hours away with traffic, and it's like, you know, he lost a limb the way they talk. And they'll about. start throwing freeway numbers at you, but you better take the 710 to the 110. That's to the all people in LA do is talk about traffic. And like, like, uh, it's like, weird to be like someone from the East Coast, and then we'll just sit and you overhear casual conversation from people who live there full time, and what they're talking about is what their commute was and how long oh, it took you 45 and minutes. Oh, yeah, to get I was going to go down to Manhattan Beach and meet someone for a beer and I told a couple people at DirecTV, I said, I'm thinking about going down to Manhattan Beach. I'm like, well, this time of day, I would not even try that. Here, here's what you want to do. You want to wait about 8 o'clock? I'm like, no, I was just asking you for a rest of my recommendation. When we went to <laughs> the, the uh, U.S. The Open, the surfing thing, which was in the morning, we mm -hmm. got up, I mean, not like super early, but it was in the morning. I must have gotten four different people calling me, texting me, uh, you might want to leave a little <laughs> earlier than you're thinking. And you're like, what? why? It, it took us like, you know, 45 like, minutes see. to get there. And they're like, uh, See, but they had, they had a football team. Hours. If they had a football team, they'd have something else to yeah. talk about. Besides traffic over and over Well, and things over. bunch up Los down Siena. there by Beach Boulevard. People are just looking out for you, Seton. Uh, Seton, uh, Altman, Josh Altman of Million Dollar Listing called in today, and he said there's a desire for it. NFL uh, franchise out here. Does that carry more weight with Dan rather than hearing that from uh, an actual NFL analyst? Well, no, nah, no, nah, I think Dan just wants to talk to Josh Altman. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it really matters what he said. Yeah. Uh, he just wants to talk to the guy from Million Dollar Listing in LA. Um, but somebody who actually knows, I mean, I, an NFL analyst, uh, that's fine. They can break down the business of it. But I do think that there's more weight to somebody who's in the area that <clears> lives there. Uh, especially as a fan um, that maybe has a better read on what the people are thinking there. When ja, Dan introduced Josh Altman on the show, he goes, here he is, he's my second favorite realtor on oh. LA. I always wonder how Dan would feel if he was a guest on a show, and let's say he went on, oh, I don't know, uh, Jimmy Fallon. Here he is, my second favorite NFL studio host, <laughs> Dan Patrick. Hey, Dan, how you doing? You know, and then brought him in. I, I don't think Dan would accept that that well, so he, I was hoping he would go easy on Josh, and he did ease up a little bit. Yeah, apologies to you, Josh. I mean, Josh Altman, that is. Josh Flagg is not half the real estate uh, agent that you are. All right. That's not true. Yeah, okay. Flagg is so good. Oh, he's so good. All right, uh, coming up, the Idiot <laughs> Awakens. Uh, hey, you want to fly the Millennium Falcon? That's ridiculous. Don't even try that. Hop in the cab of the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel. It's uh, fuel efficient enough to get you over to Tatooine, over to Alderaan, uh, right before it blows up. Then get over to Mose Isley. Head over to, uh, to the cantina, get a couple cold pops. Say hello to the Moose Man, but uh, no blasters, please. Guts Glory Ram. Luke, I am your father. I don't think she said that. No. I don't want to give away any spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, I am your father. Uh, I'm trying to process that image. Welcome back to the box score. Guys, uh, late last night, fans started streaming into the theaters to see the first installment of Star Wars. No, the latest installment of Star Wars. McLovin, you were addressed as Princess Leia and knocked me off my feet there. Um, you're just as nerdy for the NFL, though. 
Uh, which movie, if you could only see one, what would it be? Would it be Star Wars or Concussion? Is that a serious question? <laughs> Tell the truth! Tell the truth! Brock, you could come and install a major like, home screen in my theater with Concussion, and I would probably not. I'll watch it what on is, DVD, but it's art. Right. Concussion, and this is not even my politics or my chance in the NFL. It's just not, it's not a must see, it's not fun. What if we were invited by Will Smith to okay. an exclusive screen of concussion and he was gonna go out to dinner with us afterwards, Dan and the group? Yeah. Or Harrison Ford happened to be a guest on the show, just happened to be, and invited us out to see Star Wars in the city mm. and he'd go out to dinner with us afterwards. So dinner with Harrison Ford or Will Smith? Will yeah. That's a good see, I don't think Harrison Ford would engage with Dan. I don't think he'd be a lot of fun. Oh, I, I find him pretty fun on those. He's TV fun, shows. but I think he would blow us off. Yeah. He's, he gets a couple. He's of fun when he wants to be, but I don't know. If, see, Will Smith is such a nice guy. I think. But I think know. of your street cred in the Star Wars community. Today. Yeah, I went and saw Star Wars, and I was I was hanging with Solo after no big deal, MBD. McLovin, you could dine on that for decades. <sighs> yeah, but if, <sighs> Will Smith, I mean, yeah, cool, huge, but. The Philly thing, but you think with Harrison Ford does not off camera, he totally like you distances get himself. With he, if you mention Star Wars, Harrison Ford will be like, "Shut up, dude." Yeah, that's the kind of attitude he has, I think. What is that noise? He can cut your steak for you. I think those you. are lightsabers. Yeah, of course it is. I need a nebulizer right, right now. I can't breathe too well. Oh, those oh, are, quick question. This, that's Polly. audio Brock's arteries. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's blue, just like the tequila I had. Uh, hey, Polly, uh, what is the time limit on spoiler alerts for movies? What's the ruling there? That's a good question, Brock. Um, I would be very careful. I hate ruining. People always ruin stuff for others. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you would tell anybody the end of a movie. Um, that being said, let's say it's like seven months from now, and you're discussing Star Wars, and someone goes, "No, no, don't talk about it here in front of me." Ah, uh, no, too late. Seven months. Way too late. Way too late. Oh, yeah, somebody was giving months. me and Rich Eisen, who mentioned mentioned some of the Star Wars one spoilers from 1977 that Luke is uh, Darth Vader's son. Yeah. Who was giving us a hard time, be like, "Well, I just went back to the DVD collection, but I never saw it." That's I'm your fault. Like, that's, that's, that's 40 years ago. Hey, guess what? You yeah, know the kid, the kid in the Sixth Sense? He's a ghost. <laughs> Rich, he didn't see nice. that. No, he isn't. Nice for no, he isn't. Bruce Willis is. No, went at all. Now you've ruined, Bruce Willis now you've is ruined the, ghost. the entire holiday season for <laughs> Cooper and Xander, oh. for God's sakes. Now you guys ruined it for me. Hey, see, have you guys ever gotten killing for, uh, killed for spoiler alerts on the show? <laughs> Please count to yourself. Uh, Fritzy, uh, Fritzy, uh, Fritzy spoiled, spoiled yeah. pretty much every present Dan's ever bought a family member. Yeah, when you... So, uh, that was the best spoiler of all time. The Airstream. Where uh, Dan had uh, went and bought a, an Airstream trailer for his wife and told us as he was really excited about it. And then later, either that day or the next, before the present had been given to his wife, he uh, said, oh, you know, you do nice things, like uh, that Airstream trailer you just bought your wife <laughs> on national radio. That was, uh, that was a Thanks, Todd. Miscalculation by me. That was poor. Not very good at keeping a miscalculation by me. All right, we'll left turn it. Prince, get you free from that. that. Uh, Todd, you were sitting next to Princess Leia today. If you were to dress up as one character uh, and go to a premiere, which would it be? Ooh, I think I would, if I had the body for it, uh, maybe back in the day briefly, but still it wouldn't come close, I'd probably want to dress up as uh, Apollo Creed. I just, I always uh, admired his uh, physique and I'd wear the little red, yeah. white, and blue shorts and uh, of all the characters, I would, uh, I would be Apollo. Yeah, I was thinking of all, great nicknames. of all the characters of Rocky, the one that jumps out, the comparison to you is Apollo Creed. Because <laughs> if you wanted to dress as Pauly, you could just yeah, put a hat on. Yeah, <laughs> then you're Pauly. But instead, you want to put on the you want to put on the red, white, and blue shorts and dance around like this with the big red, white, and blue yeah. hat. I want you. Or go like this with a hat, and instantly you're Pauly. <laughs> it's supposed to be an exhibition. How you know? It's supposed to be an exhibition. How you know so much about Apollo? You're just a kid. He's Poor Paul Young. Look at, him. Look at him. He's just so strokey in that <laughs> picture. All right. <laughs> that doesn't bother Tom. Stay with us. <laughs> You're just a kid. I, I like snow cones. I like snow cones a lot. They're very good for me. All right, stay with us. We are celebrating a couple of holidays. Look, fat guy with the saber. Welcome back to the Box Court, guys. Life is pretty sweet right now. The show's getting canceled right before my birthday and Christmas, so I'll have plenty of time to... No, it's all right, it's all right. Uh, I've got college football 
<laughs> and I still got a TV that I can watch. So how about we combine everything, the holiday season and college football, throw it all in one big delicious loser bowl. Loser or loser. <laughs> oh my God. No Christmas presents for anyone. Um, let's play a little game I like to call current Swedish NCAA football player or IKEA holiday uh, decoration. The teams will be Todd Fantastic. and Seaton. Way to go out strong, Brock. And by the way, you asked for your birthday off, you got it. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Thank you. All right. Uh, the first one uh, is for Freeton. The word in question is Hedlin. Brock will be Hedlin for the unemployment line. Is that um, football or IKEA? Mm. <sighs> That's definitely a. Oh, wait. It's football? College football? Oh, College football shoot. or I thought, IKEA. It was, uh, I thought it was hockey player. Damn it. Why are there um, Swedish American football players? That feels like the headland something that uh, a nice Some little kind of cabinet. I was gonna say bathroom decor Part from uh, from IKEA. Buffet. Yeah, yeah nice. Then it's got some uh, pine cones. On I don't it. even remember what the nice. two choices are. It's a Swedish. Football I, I'm just gonna guess IKEA every time. <laughs> oh, IKEA, right? Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> How many Swedes are playing football? Oh, they're huge. Yeah, some huge? type of bathroom oh. furniture. Like let's go. Let's go IKEA. All right, they believe it is IKEA furniture. I'm sorry, we were looking for a football player. He is the outside linebacker for the Purdue Boilermakers, David Hedlund. David Hedlund. <laughs> You're going out. What kind of graphic is that, dude? Yeah, I thought there was going to be yeah, a yes or no. Boring. Sorry. Where's Dan going? Like, hee haw, hee haw, hee haw, you're wrong. Hee haw, hee haw, hee haw, you're wrong. Where, where's, me? where's that? Where's McLovin yodeling from 2009? Oh, I'm trying to remember the hee haw. <laughs> I missed that one. I mean, like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Team Paul Levin. The word in question is screwve. I'm screwved without a job. Football or Ikea? That's totally Ikea. Screwve. I, uh, that's actually like, 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 the uh, bedside like table. Like Ottomans? Yeah, no, no. I think it's like a bedside table to put like your drink Scoop? on. And I, Ikea. Scoop. They believe it is Ikea. <laughs> yes, they are correct. <laughs> LED lighting curtain with 48 lights. I don't, that's so disappointing. Yeah. That's supposed to be yeah. uh, Dan dancing. <laughs> like, mm, no. you're right. Ooh, you're right. Get out! Get out! Get out! Okay, Team Freighton. The word in question is Kurlort. Kurlort. Football or Ikea? That's definitely Ikea. Yeah, Absolutely. Ooh. I don't know. It takes a long time to build. Bison. I think that's a kicker. No. One double A player. That's a cabinet Georgia. that's going to take you weeks to build. No, yeah. Yeah, the they believe it's a cabinet or something that's going to take you weeks to build. You gotta stick it's it Ikea? Something. Your yeah. wife hates the building. Yeah, no, it's a uh, crushed glass. Decorative, of course. You take it. All right, bag of crushed glass. Yeah. Kids oh. love it. Oh, 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 oh. You want to get uh, team ball of it. The word in question is Strala, Strala. Football or Ikea? Uh, Strala. Football. Strala, yeah. Uh, They're not going to go three Ikea. Tom Strala. Temple linebacker? Sounds like a Tom yeah, yeah. Strala. Yeah, Temple linebacker. Uh, Tommy Strala. Yeah, they believe he plays football, <laughs> but uh, no, it is a red LED candle from <laughs> Ikea. It's also a temple linebacker. You like that? 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 Christmas donkey says you're wrong. Team Freighton. Can they just cancel it right now? Can you just someone back there pull the plug? This guy was dressed like Princess Leia all day, and this is what he doesn't want to be a part of. This is embarrassing. Yeah, this is the problem. All right, the word in question for Team Freighton is Warby, Warby, football or IKEA. Warby, like those, weren't those dolls or something? Oh, that's a Furby. Sling and Sid Warby. Furby? Should we stick with the other uh, Warby? <laughs> no, that guy's a. That is the. Uh, Middle Tennessee State? Hunter yeah. from Middle Tennessee State. <laughs> Sling yeah. and Sid. Hans yeah. Warby. He's a quarterback. Yeah. Hans uh, Warby. He's Secondary. definitely on the gridiron. Uh, Anton Warby, uh, outside linebacker for Wofford. <laughs> Wofford. Uh, I was thinking of his brother. Damn it. Finally got the puppy you always wanted. Meow. Anton You're right. Warby. Meow. You're right. Meow. You're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> and finally, Team Paul Levin. The word in question is hem smack. Hem smack. Football or IKEA? Oh, God. It's too obvious to be IKEA. It yeah. sounds IKEA. We only did two football players, and the research guy has got to, to before they leave, have to give three things. And Hemsmack is too obvious to be football, so it's got to be football. Phil, what? Yeah, Phil Hemsmack, Texas Tech. I think he's special teams on Utah, but let's see. Yeah, is he on uh, the football team? No, no, no. These are adhesive labels. Christmas <laughs> 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 Donkey says you got that wrong. 
<laughs> we just, we just, have, we just haven't smacked the beer. <laughs> All right, the winners. I don't know what the hell that was. Who are the winners? I have no idea. We're all losing. Rock the all right, we all on. lose. <laughs> don't go away because we show. soon will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's bowl season. But first, this is the box score. We need to take a break to remind you uh, that the Ram Heavy Duty, with its best in class towing, torque, and horsepower, can put Christmas donkey in the back and bring him wherever you need him. Guts, glory, Ram. We are closing up shop here on the box score. A big weekend of college football coming up. It's bowl season. Uh, Polly, there are over 40 games, uh, 40 bowl games. How many will you be watching? Truthfully, as many as I can. I usually don't watch the first half a lot of these games unless it's nighttime, but I'll always check the score. And if it's, you know, UT Martin versus uh, Alabama Tech, I'm all down. I'm in. 35-35 in the third quarter, I will settle in. I don't need to know one player on either team. It's one of the things, oh, people, there's too many bowl games. I love college football. I mean, it's like saying there's too many hamburgers. Come on, let's eat. Yeah, it's a perfect world with all these hamburgers. McLovin, are you a bowl pick em kind of guy? Do I pick bowls? No, I've been in a few bowl polls before. <clears throat> Sound weird. But yeah, and I, I've actually filled out a thing yeah, where I have to like predict it. every bowl, and I did terribly, just terribly. How about you, Fritzy? What's the best bowl game moment you can remember? Wow. I not so much a bowl game, but uh, when I, I know this, I'm, I'm going off the board. <laughs> you just say I don't have one. I, I really don't have one. Say I don't have one. But I did want to share that I, I saw a great UCLA USC game once at the Rose That has nothing to do with it, though. That has nothing to do with the question. It's the college football. Do you want to give you one? Remember the guy asked his, the Boise State, the guy asked his girlfriend to marry him? That was cool. Uh, you know, it just came to me. There was the the, the uh, player on Boise State when Ian he Johnson. decided to uh, propose to his uh, his girlfriend on the on the side of the field there. That was, uh, I'm not sure what bowl game that was. That was the Oklahoma uh, Fiesta Bowl. Was it the Fiesta Bowl? The Fiesta Get Married, uh, Get On Your Knee and Get Married Bowl. <laughs> that was really cool that he did that. That is so cool. Worldwide audience. Yeah, let's, 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 uh, let's uh, wrap this show up with love. Fritzy, who's on next week? <laughs> Uh, Will Ferrell will join us uh, on Monday. Well, I'm supposed to just say their names. They get mad. Will Ferrell, Mike Pereira. Who the hell are those guys? All right. We are back on Monday. Just just a just a touch of box score remaining. Uh, you can uh, catch the podcast available on iTunes or at podcastone.com. Thanks for watching. Mm. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple. C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey! Thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!